Virginia's got a 4 0 lead over the Diamond Dogs from Mississippi State. Hell State. Here, crowd looking for some activity here against Griff McGarry. He has been outstanding tonight. See the numbers, seven innings. He's got eight strikeouts. There's only been two base runners, a walk in the second and a hit batter in the sixth. Yeah, Ravi, a lot of times we see pitchers like this and they're locked in in the dugout and no one's allowed to talk to them. That is the complete opposite. He was chatting with Kyle Teal half that inning and then his catcher, Logan Michael, comes up to him and he goes, let's roll. He's got six, seven, eight. DeBrule, Cumbest, and Kellum Clark. And ahead quickly, 0-2. We've seen the fastball and then the breaking pitch on the outside corner. Eddie, you're a hitter. Go ahead. Tell us, you know, what your approach would be. Uh, he's on right now. You know what? They've tried several things. Swinging early. They barreled some pitches up. And if you look at the last couple innings, they've actually put on some pretty good at-bats. They've just, just been unlucky. We saw a line drive to second base. We've seen the hard shot to right field and the center field. Okay, P, you even said it. They barreled a few of them. Yeah, last few innings, they definitely have. How about this? Coming into this game, okay, McGarry on the season, 35 and two thirds innings, 40 walks, even more walks than innings this year. He's walked one tonight, he's hit one, and has filled up the zone. He's getting tired too. That's just 96. Yeah. Yep. But wherever Michaels has put the glove, for the most part, he's hit it. And that was another example right there. That's a good spoil by DeBrule on a high fastball. And you were right, right off the bat. Ignore the numbers. That's a foul ball. Because those numbers, ju they jump off the page at you. It's not now. It's I, what, I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't been the last two weeks. I mean, th this cat was thrown on Wednesdays, like six weeks ago. You don't play real games on Wednesdays in college baseball, but they got him back and he found something. And, and talking to to Brian O'Connor today, he's, I mean, it was very straightforward. The stuff that we've seen the last few weeks is the stuff that, that we know he's capable of. You want to talk about an arm that totally changes a team's ability to win a national championship? Yeah. You're staring at it right now. So far, we've seen 91 pitches. 68% of them have been for strikes. Oh, no, no! Oh, you gotta check over at first base. <laughs> go to Travis, I know you have to go to third, but... For the love of the game right here, he did not go at all. Here comes the heat. A hit batter and a walk. The only guys that have reached to lead off Matt here in the eighth on a 3-2. Oh, That's down. Ball four. Good call. And DeBrew, the leadoff man aboard. And this is the first time you get a leadoff hitter now on board against them. Pitches down. Good call. But Gary started the regional against ODU and went three and a third. He gave up three earned runs. He walked four. He did strike out eight. But Brandon Neek was the hero that night. He came on and gave you five and two-thirds innings. The last couple starts have been a completely different world. Brad Cumbest. Oh. That's pulled ball one. Good time here. Good job. Logan Michaels goes out and talks to the pitcher McGarry, who, as we saw, when he does get a little wild, he will pull it glove side, work a little quick, and maybe Logan saw that. Yeah, and I think that's when you just go out and try to stay. All right, just stay through me. Just stay right through me. Let's try to get right back in line.
pours the fastball in there. Shallow left field, Chapman coming under it, and he'll make the play for the first out. Chase the pitch out of the strike zone right there. Would have been a 3-1 count if he would have taken. Gray has been on the, been around the plate the entire game, tried to cheat to it. Now you got an important first out, still runner at first. And this is Kellen Clark who hit a laser to Cartier at second base. His last time up. We will see Rowdy Jordan and Tanner Allen again for Mississippi State. And that ball is drilled to right field, and it is deep, and Teal goes back, looks up, it's gone! A two-run home run, Kellum Clark. Mississippi State off the mat, the first hit allowed from Griff McGarry, and it's 4-2 now, Virginia. Fourth of the year for Kellum Clark, and he's arguably got the hardest balls hit tonight for Mississippi State. Wanted to get ahead, 0-1 right there, and Staddy beat him to a fastball to the spot, first pitch. As soon as he hit it, he knew it. Cut the deficit in half right now, 4-2. And this has become now a wake-up call for the, for the fans here from Mississippi State. Josh Hatcher is going to pinch hit for Lane Forsyth. And all of a sudden, the crowd here in Omaha has broken up. And here comes Brian O'Connor. 99 pitches for Griff McGarry. And the first hit he allows is a two-run shot to Kellen Clark. And they'll turn it over to what has been a very reliable bullpen. was an outstanding effort from Griff McGarry, and you know that they will give him an ovation. In fact, knowing the Mississippi State fans and baseball fans that are here, they'll all appreciate an effort like that. Zach Messenger is going to come in, the righty. And he will get to the mound, and that's when we'll see McGarry exit. Well, that'll do it for Griff McGarry tonight, but what a night it was. Didn't strike anybody out in the first. And after that, right-hander went to work. Fastball up to 97. Really controlled the zone the entire night. Just two walks, one in the second. Laid off walk in the eighth. It would later come around to score. Uh, the only hit that McGarry would give up. A two-run home run to the freshman, Kellum Clark. But McGarry goes seven in a third. Punches out eight. Gives up just the one hit. And as it stands right now, 
He's in line for the win. Which would be his first of the year. He was part of a Virginia no hitter earlier this year. Andrew Abbott started it. That was May 14th against Wake Forest, but McGarry was one of two relievers who combined for it. And now they turn it over to Messenger making his 27th appearance. And Josh Hatcher, the pinch hitter. And again, Rowdy Jordan, Tanner Allen. Oh, to come. New ball game. Hatcher, a 190 hitter, two homers, 12 RBIs. A little cutter there at 93, and he swings through it. Into the mitt. There's only one team that has allowed one or fewer hits in a College World Series game the last three and a half decades. Over the last 35 seasons, it was Virginia. Nathan Kirby, Artie Lewicki, a one-hitter against Ole Miss in the 2014 College World Series. One and two to Hatcher. Stays alive. ball on the ground in the hole smothered long throw oh it's no it's by the first baseman Geloff and they will tag the runner and he is going to be called safe Let's see if Hatcher took a big turn there but according to the first base umpire Katsumar there was no turn what an effort by Nick Kent heck of an athletic play just all arm right there Geloff can't make the play But again, four sides, I thought maybe have taken a jab step towards second. And here we go with Rowdy and Jordan, the leadoff man for Mississippi State. Alive and well here with one out in the eighth inning, down two. You can feel the momentum shifting here towards Mississippi State. Hatcher has got good speed over there at first. He has stolen five bases in six attempts. It's like a locomotive coming at you right now with a fan base. The dogs are out. But easy too. That's easy 94. This doesn't appear to be a whole heck of a lot of an effort behind Messenger. Right, up there, up there. Trying to match the largest deficit ever overcome here. South Carolina, Oregon State, 2011 and 17. That's way outside. Two balls and a strike. Tanner Allen, 10 homers, 60 plus RBI on deck. This one to left center going over there is Newell and he is not going to get it. It's over his head. It goes to the wall. Hatcher will round Jordan's right, but now we got a rundown and there's nobody at second base and he gets back safely. Rowdy Jordan put his head down and he was determined to get to third base. When he looked up, Hatcher was standing there. And because both Kent and Cartier had went to be cut off, man, there was nobody at second to get the out. Yeah, and if you saw right there on the right side of the screen, Hatcher pulled up a little too early. You have to continue to run until you see this. Watch Hatcher right there. He had already had stopped before the base. You have to be on or past the base when Newell was going to make the play or not. That's why. 
Jordan right there is wondering what's going on. Fortunately, no one at second base behind Jordan to make a play on him. And it's funny, Rowdy Jordan put his hands up when he saw Hatcher as if to say, what are you doing? And you could see in the background, the baseball was flying towards home yeah. plate. I mean, you get the middle infielders out there to double cut. The first baseman following the cut. There was just nobody at second base. Rowdy Jordan was halfway there. How about this now? Steven Schock, the closer. He's been so good for Virginia the entire season. His last outing, 75 pitches in the regional. Did not pitch in the Super. Has not pitched yet here in Omaha. It appears as if he's about to. As O'Connor goes to the mound and Rowdy Jordan's double after Hatcher with an infield single. Big break for Mississippi State. Nobody there at second base. Jordan was dead to rights. And now he's the tying run with one out. Interesting situation they got going on right here. Tanner Allen now up to the plate. You have first base open. He's the go ahead run. Baseball rule 101, you know about not walking at all the go ahead run, putting him on base. If there were two outs, I would do it. But with one out, you have to pitch to him. Well, to Kyle's point, this is a big, big story now. Shock, who was rested because he wasn't feeling great in the arm, is now going to make his first appearance in Omaha. One out, eighth inning, down two with two on for Mississippi State. Let's go back here. You can see the third base coach breaks are on there for Hatcher. <laughs> the breaks weren't on for that guy, Rowdy Jordan. What are you doing? <laughs> and he would have made it easily the third base standing up. Oh, yeah. Hatcher in front of him just was not in the correct position once the ball got by a center fielder. Well, and now the kid that became a story based on his postgame interview and his success, really, Stephen Shock, eight saves. He's a side armor. He's been dealing with a cranky arm. And he's 24 years young. Well, for as much as he is a character on the microphone, he also is on the mound. He talked to me this week about how he has to see red. He will throw his glove. He will get angry. He equated it to like when his dog watches him eat chicken parmesan, and that's all he can focus on. <laughs> yeah, he's thinking the same thing. He is a beautiful human right here. All closer. Let's see primarily fastball slider from Shaq. What a moment for Tanner Allen. His buddy Rowdy Jordan out there at second base, the tying run. Allen, the go-ahead run. This inning started with Griff McGarry on the mound for Virginia, having not allowed a hit. He gave up a two-run home run to Kellen Clark, and then the bullpen doors were open. First messenger, and now Shock, best hitter and player in the SEC conference, is at the plate. See where this next pitch is because th this could just be one of those big old unintentional intentional walks you know just don't give him anything good to hit he did and that one is driven to right and it is deep and it is gone tanner allen a free run home run mississippi state five runs in the inning and now lead it five to four The second pitch from Shock into the bullpen. Comeback complete for the dogs. Circle guy. This is a circle guy. Don't let him beat you. His eyes were right there on point of contact. 
He knew it once he hit it. Bulldog fans knew it. They're partying right now in Starkville. What a heck of a comeback by the Bulldogs. And the night for Griff McGarry, a no-hitter into the eighth inning. A walk, he got a fly out, and then gave up a two-run home run. And now a three-run shot for Tanner Allen, RBI 63, 4, and 5. And there's another one to left on a line. Tappen is there, and that'll retire Cameron James with a second out. I mean, how about it? Two guys are the face of this program right now. Tanner Allen, the SEC Player of the Year. Rowdy Jordan, his roommate, and they are right in the middle of it this inning. Jake Gotro pumping his fist right there. He got the matchup that they wanted now. You got Tanner Allen coming to the plate with a right-handed side armor coming. They went breaking ball, breaking ball, and the second one was a three-run jack. Two blasts in the inning for Mississippi State, who came into the game with 70 home runs. And to the backstop. This comeback is possible because of what the bullpen. They've given them the opportunity to come back. Shut down baseball. Now Virginia scored all four of their runs in the first two innings and zero since. 1 0 to Luke Hancock. Number five and number four, Tanner Allen and Rowdy Jordan, the heartbeat of this Mississippi State team. They knew they were coming up, and man, did they deliver. Two and one. The first pitch was 73. That pitch, 84. The velocity is just not there for Stephen Schock. Six out still for Virginia and their offense. Brian O'Connor's got some more activity in his bullpen. I'm not sure how long you leave Shock in. <laughs> Foul. This kid's had an unbelievable year, man. I mean, he's he's one of the reasons why Virginia is here right now. He's out of stuff. At least today he is. I mean, the fastball just doesn't have any pop to it. The spinner is just spinning. And it's it's hard, man, if you're a coaching staff, because your heart's telling me he's been there the entire season. This is the guy that's closed it out at the end, but the eyes don't tell the same story right now. Nate Savino, who they would hope to use as a starter. Throwing hard. Uh, Witten also up for Virginia. You know, but during in between innings when we had that conversation with coach Chris Lamonis, he was saying the same thing about Christian McLeod. You know, feeling bad, he's one of the big reasons why they are here. Yeah. But it's a move that he had to make. Look so far, the bullpen has given Mississippi State this opportunity. 3 2 to Hancock. That one to center, it's going to get down in front of Newell. And Hancock single may signal the end for Stephen Shock tonight. Eight men have come to the plate for Mississippi State. Brian O'Connor doesn't appear to be making that move yet. Now this would be his last hitter if he doesn't get out of it. Logan Tanner. Oh. 
Two home runs in the eighth inning. Kellum Clark, a two-run shot. Tanner Allen, a three-run blast. Mississippi State, five. Virginia, four. Looked like a good pitch, and if Shock's not going to get that, he's not long for it. And there they are, the two roommates and close friends. Rowdy Jordan, number four, Tanner Allen, number five, right in the middle of this five-run rally tonight. Jordan's double was his eighth career hit, by the way, at the World Series, which ties him for third all-time in Mississippi State World Series history. Only Mangum and Rusty Toms have more with nine, and he's obviously going to get more opportunities. Runner out to second base. Tanner Leggett. Well, if this is the last time you see Shock, he has certainly made an imprint on this Virginia Cavalier baseball team and the Virginia Cavalier family. And all of it positive. Very authentic, very candid in his post-game interviews. Oh, yeah. And uh, that type of vulnerability endears you to folks. Nate Savino will come in. Shock will exit. And the Diamond Dogs have got themselves a 5-4 lead with two home runs here in the eighth and a five-run inning. Take a break. Back to Omaha in a College World Series. Kellum Clark with a two-run home run. Allen a three-run shot in Mississippi State. Has rallied from a 4-0 deficit. It is incredible how quickly this game turned. Griff McGarry, the starter for Virginia, had a no-hitter into the eighth inning, gave up a walk, then gave up a two-run homer, and there he is, and he was taken out of the game. Nothing allowed, just the one hit. So all plans have changed now. Nate Savino, the sophomore, who it felt like was going to be the starter in their third game, now pressed into duty here. And it's not over for Virginia. They still have no. two at bats. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's a one run game right now. Obviously, the. I mean, the momentum and. And the volume level has shifted dugouts right here. But the reality is you're. You're still right in this thing if you're Virginia, but you got to keep it right where it is. So Scotty DeBrule, who got this whole thing started, back up for the second time this inning. He led things off with a walk. And two on. The first pitch. That's through. That's in the hole. That's going to bring in Hancock. He scores 6-4 Mississippi State. First pitch swinging. Scotty DeBrule in a big tack-on run. Mississippi State giving Virginia a little bit of their own medicine. We saw this early on in the second inning. Runners at first and second, just moving them around. Now it's Mississippi State doing it. Left on left, base hit in the 5-6 hole. Just adding on 
Kime acquired some jug runs. Now it's Tanner Leggett who was in for a pinch runner. He scored that sixth run. RBI for DeBruel. Still first and second. Still two outs. And Nate Savino, one pitch. Allows the runner from second to score. You were wondering if they were going to use Brandon Sims that appears to be the answer as he's getting loose. Kellum Clark. Brad Cumbus looks at another one down. Clark on deck with the big two run home run. What an about face in this game. But we talked about it when Mississippi State didn't have any hits in the sixth and the seventh. There's a lot of offense here. And a lot of offense all came alive. Six hits in the ball game, all in this inning, all six runs here in the eighth. Thing is, you could see it coming. A lot of hard contact, a lot of outs that were yep. line drive, center field, second base, left field, right field. What adjustment did they have to make? Just find a hole or hit it over the fence. They did that. Six run, eighth inning. Cumbus popped out to left this inning. He's 0 for 3. 2 and 2. See Logan Tanner there at second base. He's moving around, getting, trying to get a big lead, jumping around, not going anywhere. Way outside, three and two. Now he will. Feels a little bit more like Judy Noble right now. will be going swing and a miss and that'll do it Cumbus strikes out but wow what an inning for the dogs two home runs Clark Allen it's 6-4 we head to the bottom of the eighth